Okay, uh, welcome back to a new LaTeX tutorial. Uh, in this video, I would like to um, explain, or I would like to introduce, uh, I would say, a package which is called Tix. And this is used for, um, or commonly used for making drawings in LaTeX. Yeah? So you can make very simple drawings by just lines, uh, drawing lines in the canvas, or you can even go uh, beyond that uh, by uh, doing plots in LaTeX, or people are using it, for example, to make very complicated sketches, even in 3D, or drawing Feynman diagrams. So there are many possibilities that you can do with this, and it's just giving you a vector graphics as output, so you get, get a PDF. This PDF you can also convert to other bitmap uh, formats like uh, PNG, for example, and then you can use this in uh, in many occasions. You can insert it on your website. You can uh, use it for your thesis. Uh, actually, all drawings for my thesis, for my PhD thesis, I have done with LaTeX. So it's really a powerful package, and I would uh, really recommend that you have a look at this because um, it's uh, it's from my point of view much. When you know how it works, it's much easier than, for example, Inkscape, yeah, where you still have to click a lot. And here you have to insert for everything your commands. Okay, so in order to explain how this works, I created here a new LaTeX file called tix.tech. And uh, here um, I would first, uh, as usual, create our document class here. And I would like to introduce here a new class. So um, in the past, I always said that there is an um, article, there is book and so on. But there is also another one, which is called standalone. And this is very important because um, here, if you use this class, then LaTeX automatically adjusts the page size according to the content. Yeah? So if you put one letter into that document, then you have the page size of this one letter. And if you insert a graphics or a figure in a ticks, then you will see that later the, the size of the page will be adjusted accordingly. Okay, then the only package which we want to include is ticks, of course. And then we can directly start with uh, creating our document and end our document. And then we can use uh, tix, uh, tix picture is the environment that we have to use. Um, yeah, and again, and tix uh, picture. Yeah, and now I sh want to show this with a very simple example. Uh, but of course, you can make a full tutorial series about this even. So if you are interested in this, uh, just tell me in the comment section. Maybe I have, if I have time, I will go a little bit deeper into this subject. Otherwise, I will just now introduce the fundamental basics that you have to know in order to do something. Yeah. So the first thing which I would like to explain is how to draw just a simple coordinate system. Yeah. So in this case, we always use this uh, command draw to draw something. Yeah. This we always have to use. And then we have to insert in parentheses the coordinates where we want to draw our first point. Yeah. So let's suppose we want to do it at minus two and minus three. So minus two in x direction and minus three in y direction. And from this we want to go and then we have to write here, uh, if we want to create a solid line, we have to insert here these two dashes. And then we can insert two pluses here, which means from that point go so and so many points in the direction which I will insert now. In this case, uh, seven units in x direction and zero in y direction. So what we do now is drawing a line from the coordinates minus three, mi minus two, minus three, and then from this point plus seven in x direction. Yeah. Okay. And uh, because we want to have an arrow here, we have to insert here rectangular brackets behind the straw command. And we have to insert a dash and this arrow sign. And then uh, if uh, we are not doing any mistake, then we can compile that and you see almost nothing because we have only one single line here. Yeah? And this will uh, lead to problems. So of course, we also want to insert now our y axis. And this we can do exactly in the same way. We start at minus two, minus three and go uh, plus uh, zero in x direction and plus seven in y direction. And now you can see here we have our coordinate system and uh, these arrow signs here are not very beautiful from my point of view. So I usually uh, don't use this. I use LaTeX here. So when you write dash LaTeX, you get a little bit more, uh, yeah, more fancy um, arrow signs. And uh, of course you can see now 
um, the standalone package cuts exactly um, inside the line of our coordinate systems. So what we have to do, we have to extend this a little bit. And the easiest way is that we insert some labeling here. So we want to label this axis here with X and this axis with Y. So what we can do here, we can insert a node and this node always refers to the point which we have entered last. Yeah, so in this case, this one here, and then we can write node, uh, parentheses we don't need, but we have to insert curly brackets for uh, typing in a title or a label. And then in math mode, we will write here X. And you will see that now an X appears here uh, directly yeah, on top of our arrow, which we don't want. We want to have it below that. Yeah? So we can write note below. And then you see that now the X label uh, appears below this arrow. So the same we can do for the X axis here. We can write here uh, behind that note. And then uh, we want to have it on the left side. And in curly brackets, we have to insert a Y. Yeah, so now we have here our very easy, simple coordinate system. Yeah, and the great advantage of LaTeX compared to or com of TIX compared to many other Visivic programs is that you can easily insert uh, 3D coordinates. Yeah, so if we insert now a third coordinate here, which is maybe in this case zero, and here again also zero, and here we insert a third one and another third one here, you will see nothing changes. But now we can copy paste that and uh, insert another axis here. Um, so we go maybe from zero. Uh, here we insert a zero and here we will write again a seven. Yeah? So again, we go plus seven in Z direction. And now you see that ticks automatically creates the uh, perspective of that. Yeah? So, uh, uh, or the projection of this 3D coordinate system. Yeah, so it, you can also rotate it. I mean, you can do many, many things with that, a lot of fancy stuff, but in this case, of course, it should be only an introduction. So we will keep it as it is. So now we see a very nice, beautiful 3D, um, 3D, um, 3D uh, uh, coordinate system. So now we have our coordinate system and just let's uh, draw something in that. Uh, maybe we will just use as an example some vector addition. So first we um, we draw a vector. Now, so we know already that we have to uh, use this dash latex in order to create this arrow sign. And then let's suppose we want to start at zero zero. And this is also the reason why I shifted this coordinate system here to uh, to minus two and minus three. So we will start somewhere here. And now what we have to write here is, for example, we can insert some coordinates here, three and four. Yeah? So this means we go from zero, zero to three and four. And when we draw this, you can see now here our nice vector line, which uh, appears. And we can also insert easily another vector. Um, again, dash latex, but this time I want, don't want to insert it in real coordinates. I mean, in Cartesian coordinates, I want to insert it in polar coordinates. And this you can also do very simple. You first have to write down an angle, for example, minus 30 degree. Yeah? Also zero, is, zero degree means um, along the x axis and minus 30 means that it's tilted down. And minus 30, and let's suppose then the length you have to um, add behind this column here. And this should be maybe four. Uh, and I think the standard unit is centimeter in uh, ticks. And uh, yeah, when you do that um, and you run this, everything works. If everything works well, you see now another vector here, uh, which is uh, created. Okay, so now what we want to do, we want to actually create a parallelogram. Yeah? So in order to do that, we have to know these endpoints here, where these vectors end. And this you can do very easily um, in LaTeX. But before we do this, maybe we want to add some labeling here also. So we could write here note as we have done it before. Um, and then we can write here, for example, vec A, because we want to call this vector A, but here it is shown there in this position, but we want to maybe have it in the center somewhere. So for that, we can insert in uh, rectangular brackets here, this um, keyword midway behind node. And then you see it shifts into the, to, to the middle of this vector, to this line. Uh, and then we can maybe write here left and then in addition to the midway, it will also be shifted to the left. And the same we can also do now here, of course. 
Uh, so here we write node midway, again left maybe, uh, and then we will call that vector uh, b. Okay, uh, maybe left is not the right position, maybe below, so it looks a little bit more beautiful. Okay, and now we can also get the coordinates of these points here, of these two points which we created very easily. And for that we create here behind this uh, coordinate a node, another one. We can either do it here or we can do it here, it doesn't matter. And then in parentheses we can give it a name. Yeah? So for example we call that point A. And we have to insert curly brackets because otherwise you will get an error message behind that. And the same we can also do here and here we call that point B. And when you compile this you will see nothing has changed. The figure looks exactly as before. But what we can do now, we can actually draw, uh, in this case maybe a dashed line, from A and then plus plus, as we have done it before, um, minus 34 in minus 34 direction. So you see now here our dashed line is parallel to B. Yeah? Um, and of course uh, you see there is a slight offset and this is because you have to specify especially that you want to start in the center of this node. So we have to write here a dot center and now the line exactly shifts to this point. Yeah? So it's very simple if once you understand the logic behind it you can do everything with that. And the same we want to do now also here for point B. Um, we can also give this another name here. Let's call this node C. And then we can draw here from B dot center up to C dot center. And yeah, now we have here our parallelogram, yeah, our vector, added vectors. And yeah, and then we only want to draw the, um, the, the resulting vector from this addition. And for them, again, we start at 0, 0. And we want to draw this until two, uh, until C center. Now we have here our line. And now we want to maybe also uh, make an arrow from that. Uh, dash latech. Yeah. Then what we also want to maybe uh, change is the color. We want to change the color to red. It looks a little bit more beautiful, I think. And we can also uh, right thick here and then the line will be a little bit thicker compared with the other vectors. Yeah, so now we have a very nice uh, nice shaped um, arrow uh, and then we can also of course um, Maybe we can write here above give that a name and In this case we want to call it maybe vector C. Okay So this also works uh, very well as you see Okay um, this is a very nice thing. Maybe what, what I would also like to show, I mean, this is very simple. When you get a little bit feeling for that, you can draw these kind of diagrams uh, very easily. Um, now, what I also want to show is maybe how to draw um, or how to define an angle here between vector B and C, for instance. So what we do here, we draw at, uh, we start at zero, zero, and then we don't want to draw any line here. So we, we will not end, uh, add these two dashed two, two dashes here. Um, we can only write here plus plus. And then um, we start at uh, minus 30, maybe one in B direction. Yeah. Uh, and then arc is the command for, um, for drawing an, an uh, arc. Um, so part of a circle actually and then we go from minus 30 degree to 17 degree this I calculated before this is approximately the correct value uh, one yeah uh, we want to make it one centimeter long uh, the, the radius of our arc should be one centimeter yeah? and now when we compile this you see here now our arc has been created um, in between minus 30 which is here and um, minus uh, and plus 17 sorry this is here yeah and now we can also add in addition here uh, maybe a theta. Um, so, I mean the label of our angle. So we can write here, uh, let's suppose we want to have it uh, under an angle of minus 10 degree in uh, with a radius of 0 0.75, 0 0.75 in, uh, in this direction here, in minus 10 degree direction. 
um, and then we call that maybe node uh, theta and when you compile this now you see our angle theta appears yeah? uh, maybe 0.75 is too much maybe we only 0.7 yeah? then it looks a little bit uh, nicer okay yeah great uh, this is uh, actually a very nice uh, graph which you can a um, nice sketch which you can create but of course you can also create plots of functions and this I would also like to just show how it works um, although it's not uh, as I said you need a little bit more um, a little bit more uh, ideas about it uh, by having a full tutorial series uh, maybe I uh, I really can do this if I have time but um, it's it's maybe enough that you know how it works and the rest you can also find out yourself maybe okay um, so what we will do now uh, we will draw and in this case we will change we will use the color blue uh, at zero zero uh, plot and um, we want to draw a signed function so we want to draw it from 0 to maybe 4 pi which means two periods uh, it should be drawn smoothly we don't want to see any edges yeah? and we want to increase the number of samples to maybe 100 yeah otherwise uh, even if we draw it smooth we would see that the uh, that the graph is a little bit disturbed but with 100 samples I think this should be more than enough and now we can create here actually uh, just our in, in parentheses we can insert two curly brackets uh, separated with a comma and in the first one we just write x because we don't this should be just the x value here uh, along the x-axis and here maybe we can insert a sign function uh, with an arbitrary um, angular speed uh, times uh, x and if I didn't do anything wrong now you see here that we have our uh, sine wave created um, but of course maybe we don't want to have it here we want to have it at the start of our coordinate system so in this case we have to shift this if we type in a number here it will not do anything because it will be just ignored by plot but what we can do in order to shift something a group in, inside ticks to another position we can put it into a scope uh, this whole whole group that we want to shift um, we can also make an indent here uh, in order to make it lie nicer um, and then we can write here in brackets for example x shift uh, minus 2 centimeter and y shift minus 3 centimeter and then it should be positioned here um, at the beginning of our coordinate system now yeah? we can also maybe um, as you can see here I can zoom a little bit in as you can see here um, where, where all the vectors meet in the beginning we can also maybe draw a, a circle a filled circle so for that we don't have to use the draw command but fill instead and um, yeah we want to fill it in blacks or we want to draw it in black so it doesn't matter or maybe in red we can also do that um, and then um, at zero zero and then here the command is circle and then we have to insert a radius here so if we do it in centimeter it will be very huge so maybe we can just write 2pt for two point and um, yeah of course here I made a mistake this should be uh, within below the scope but within the ticks environment and now when we do that now you see that we have a red circle here red filled circle yeah, so as you can see in a very simple way you can create even the most complicated plots and sketches and I have used this as I said to make many figures in my in my PhD thesis um, and I think then also the advantage is that the font uh, the font type font size font color and everything and so on matches with your thesis and it looks like that uh, the figure is fully integrated in in your paper in your publication your thesis and so on yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, this is everything what I want to show now. As I said, if you want to have more information about it, put it in the comment section. I will try to provide this in the near future. And uh, if you learn something new, um, or I hope that you learn something new. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Uh, please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far. And uh, hopefully see you soon for a new video uh, in, uh, yeah, maybe if, I'm, if I have some time, then I will try to continue with another Python video. And uh, yeah, until then, see you later.